Up next is also Cincinnati. Kim is calling. Hey, Kim, how are you? Hi, Dave. I'm great. Thanks Good. for taking my call. Sure. How can I help? Well, um, we've, we've been debt-free for several years. We own some farms, including the one we live on, um, and they, they're paid free and clear. Good. Um, and, you know, out of embarrassment, I never told anybody until recently. I felt like maybe... Did you felt wrong. like you were bragging. Yes. yes. It wasn't embarrassment. You just didn't want to be prideful. Yeah. That's okay. And, well, we had a family uh, get-together not too long ago, and I confessed to everybody, my brothers. And... You confessed yeah. that you were debt-free. Yeah. That's funny. And um, Like it's something wrong. <laughs> and my brother, my older brother, said, that is a bad idea. Your older it's... brother's an idiot. <laughs> Well, he, um, his financial guy, I guess, he listens to somebody up. Yeah, who's also an idiot, yeah. And he says that a mor- mortgage is a good thing. Yeah, he does. I'm sure he does. Well, um, He's an idiot. Well, he, he uh, taking that guy's advice, he refinanced his home and took the equity out and yeah. invested it in that yeah. what I don't know. Yeah. And then if the investment goes bad, you know what he's got? Well, mortgage. he just lost his job, too. Oh, he lost his job. Now yeah. he's got a mortgage, yeah. See how this works? But I don't... When you refinance, do you start over? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay. Because yeah. I thought, because, you know, the horrible thing, I couldn't... What if you went and borrowed $100,000 against your farm and invested it? Yeah, well... You know, I just heard you take a breath. Yeah. See what I mean? <laughs> I you don't know. Went, <gasps> <gasps> okay. you know, you know. But you know why? Because he left risk out of this scenario, and now he's experiencing risk. That's why I said he's an idiot. That's why I said his financial guy's an idiot. Yeah. Okay? You don't borrow because it adds risk. It adds volatility to your life. And if you financially and mathematically factor in risk in all these equations that these goobers are using, then it suddenly changes the thing, and you get to find out that God's a genius when he said the borrower's slave to the lender. Well, I he asked me, why Why do you think this is a good idea to pay off your mortgage? And, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, well... Because I don't have any debt? Yeah, and when I lose well, my job he, or have a problem, I'm not sitting like you with my finger in my ear. Well, he tried to tell me I, I lost my tax break, my tax deduction, but is it that much? I don't. I no. guess I never look. You know what a tax break is? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you when we come back. We're talking with Kim in Cincinnati, who's a genius. All of her farms are paid for. She does, however, have a brother that's an idiot. He thinks she ought to be go deeply in debt and keep uh, mortgages everywhere because she could invest it like he did, uh, refinance his house and invest it, then he lost his job. Um, or he, she would lose the tax deduction. And so she had this, uh, she thought she was having a moment where she got to tell the family she was debt free, and then he treated her like a simpleton. And that's about how far we got in the conversation. Is that a fair summary of where we are right now? Kim? Let me try again. There we go. It's my fault. Yeah. I didn't push the magic button. <laughs> okay. Kim, that, is that a fair summary? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I All right. The reason, I'm kinda being, the reason I'm kind of being snide about this mm-hmm. is I, I kind of get tired of these goobers running around acting like they know something when they don't. Yeah. I mean, and putting somebody like you down. Yeah, and here I, you know, well, it's my... Here you are, a genius with probably close to a million dollar net worth. He's lost his job and is in trouble, and he thinks you're a simpleton. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's just ridiculous, you know? So it kind of makes me go into smart aleck mode. I'm sorry if I'm picking on your brother, but that's kind of where I go. Okay. Uh-oh. So let's go back and answer your questions very detailed because there's a lot of goobers out there who do, think like he does, and let's go ahead and address all of it, all right? Okay. Back to the first thing. If you borrowed $100,000 on one of your paid-for farms, mm-hmm. not to mention you'd be brain damaged, if you did that and you invested that in good growth stock mutual funds and you made 12% and you borrowed the money at 6% in the mortgage market, why would you not be making, if 12 minus 6, why would you not be making 6%, Dave? Am I not getting rich using OPM, other people's money? Yeah. My answer is no. Yeah, I figured if it was that easy, then everybody, especially with the stock, we <sighs> uh, we invest see, a little bit in the stock, just enough that, that we can afford to lose, have see, fun with. See, there you go. But This we, is a person we, who's thinking. Well, All we right. buy real estate, and we've had such good luck with yeah, that. Yeah, but even then, even then, what happens is, Versus where you are today, if I took you a hundred or five hundred thousand dollars into debt using his formula, it sounds like you'd make money. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. But the truth is, at the end of the day, you don't. And here's why: twelve percent. When you make twelve percent on your money, you know what you have to pay taxes. Right. After taxes, that's an effective after-tax yield of about nine point four percent in your world. Mm-hmm. Now I'm comparing six to nine point four, but I can't compare these apples to apples anymore. And the reason I can't compare them apples to apples is you don't compare a risk investment with a no-risk investment without adjusting for the risk. Right. 
okay? And 100% of the time that you pay off the $100,000 loan or $500,000 loan at 6%, 100% of the time, they no longer charge you 6%. Okay. That's a zero risk. Mm -hmm. Good growth stock mutual funds, while I recommend them and invest in them, are not zero risk. Right. They go up and down. Right. And so if you're going to be sophisticated, academically sophisticated, when you compare two investments of unlike risk categories, you have to mathematically adjust for the risk. Right. If you were sophisticated, you would. And he's not. Neither is his financial goober. Right. Okay. And, and that's why he's a goober. Because he's running around acting like this very naivete formula that he's using is real world. It's not the real world. In the real world, we have taxes and risk. So when I adjust your 9.4 after tax for risk, it looks a lot like 6. Mm -hmm. At best, you're breaking even, and you put your home up on the block. Right. I, my, um, I've always told my husband, if you ever find another farm, you will not put my farm up as collateral. There you go. <laughs> Where I live as collateral, because... There's That's, no way I'm going to lose it as long as we pay see, the property tax. What you're doing there is you, you're not you're not mathematically doing it, but you have a good risk meter, mm -hmm. and your risk meter is may, leading you to make more conservative decisions. Which, by the way, as I meet with people with five and ten million dollar net worths, they have a tendency over the scope of their life to make conservative decisions like you're making. They move slowly, mm -hmm. and that's how they got five ten million dollars. Okay. Yeah. Now, second part of the equation. If I paid, if I don't have a two hundred thousand dollar loan, I don't have a tax deduction. Right. That was his other goober statement. Right. Okay. And that one goes around all the time. I used to believe that same stuff, so I was a goober too. All right. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I have got all these finance degrees, and I've been taught by all these these, these characters with letters and licenses after my name, and an old farmer that reached into his bib overalls and paid for a farm I was selling when I was twenty years old taught me this. He reached in the top, you know, the top bib, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Paid cash for a $120,000 piece of ground out of the bib Yeah. at the closing. That's this guy, all right? And he's like, I said, well, don't you, don't you want to borrow and have the tax deduction? He said, son, you don't know anything, do you? <laughs> and I said, no, apparently I don't. I don't have $120,000 in the bib of my overall. So what do it teach me? And uh, he started laughing, and he said, well, let's walk through the math, genius. <laughs> let's do it, okay? $200,000 debt. 5% interest. You had a great mortgage rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 5% of 200000 is $10,000, isn't it? Mm hmm So that means you're paying the bank $10,000 and you have a $10,000 tax deduction that year. Would that be correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you have a $10,000 tax deduction and you made $75,000 last year, you would take the tax deduction and you would not pay taxes on seventy-five. and t instead you would pay taxes on sixty-five. Is that correct? Say right. yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's what a tax deduction is. Okay. But in my world, in your world, we're saying we'd rather pay taxes on 75 than 65. We don't have a tax deduction. Ooh, mm -hmm. ooh, ooh. So what are taxes on $10,000? At the top of the tax bracket in the marginal tax bracket system, you'd be in a 25% tax right. bracket. Okay. 25% of $10,000 would be your taxes. $2,500 is what you saved by paying the bank 10000 mm, Okay. So the farmer told me, he said, Dave, you're sending 10000 bucks out to save 2500 yeah. I thought you had a college degree, boy. <laughs> And looked at me like I was the idiot that I was. Yeah. And I'll never forget that as long as I live. Because I went, oh, my gosh, all these geniuses with no money yeah. have no sense. Because I, I had a hard time with it when my husband says, I'm just going to go and pay, <laughs> pay this off. Yeah, but you see what you're doing? You're yeah. trading 10 for 2500 in our example. Yeah. You're trading a buck for a quarter. And if you want to do that, I got a better idea. Give the, give the $10,000 to your church. Yeah. You get the exact same write-off, and you don't have to be in debt to do it. Where's your brother's charitable giving, by the way? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, since he's dad blamed genius, and he likes trading a buck for a quarter, there's a better idea. Well, he's the type that um, leases yeah, cars. Well, yeah, he does a lot of stuff that's not smart, and that's why he's in financial trouble. two years is up, um, things are going wrong with the car, so it's just cheaper to buy. <laughs> now, since we've covered all the academic discussion on this and, and destroyed both of these myths... Mm -hmm. thoroughly for all of our listeners out there and i used you to do it um one last bit of advice just for you okay my grandmother used to say those convinced against their will are of the same opinion still okay everybody has people in their families that they don't agree with hey i've got some of my family members that actually vote for democrats uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, never... I know it's shocking i know it's hard to believe but it has happened <laughs>
<laughs> and you know what? I still love them, and we still eat Thanksgiving dinner together. And um, but we don't talk about that because they're wrong. And um, you know that way we don't have to argue. Those convinced against their will are of the same opinion still. So you're probably not going to talk him out of this because he's so arrogant. He thinks you're a simpleton, and you're actually smarter than he. Is.